Welcome back to Jatai Academy. Today we're going to be doing a technical deep dive comparison between point cutting and blunt cutting. So let's get started. So what I want to do is compare the differences between cutting hair completely blunt versus going through and cutting hair and point cutting it. Now the point cuts I'm going to take are going to be a little more exaggerated so we can see the effect of it a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to start nape section Everything's dry. It'll be more prevalent if we can see it when it's dry versus when it's wet. The end result will be no difference whether I've cut this wet or dry. I'm going to start with my Kyoto scissor from Jatai. And this is a kind of a fatter scissor. So the fatter the blade is, the more weight you got. So the more hair that it can cut at one time. So I can take a thicker section. Comb this straight down. Go through, cut this as blunt as I can. Cutting on dry hair, the scissor tends to push. But that's with any scissor, no matter how sharp the scissor is, no matter how expensive it is. So I want to go through and counteract that push by cutting on the back stroke. And that will give me a nice, clean, even, straight line. Now on the other side, I'm going to go through and point cut. And I'm going to point cut fairly deeply and fairly predominantly. And I'm going to point cut this both ways so that I can counteract any sort of movement that I may introduce by only cutting it in one direction. Comb this again straight down. Follow my guide. Now if I only cut this in one direction by point cutting, that's the direction that the hair is going to want to flow because I'm going from shorter to longer with my internal point cuts. So if I can go through and cut that both ways, then I'll make that point cut a lot more neutral. Clean that up a little bit. Follow us on all of our socials at Jatai Feather. Now we're going to go through and I'm going to continue cutting my baseline, doing exactly the same thing. Blunt on the left, point cut on the right. Try not to take too thick of a section so that I can continue cutting a very clean line. Now at this point, I can already see my first challenge by cutting blunt versus cutting point cutting. Um, if I'm cutting the hair blunt, I have to deal with any kind of insignificant graduation. In order to keep that blunt, I have to keep cleaning that line up. On the right side where I've been point cutting, since I'm making that line a lot softer and a lot more jagged, I don't have to worry about my graduation at all really. I just have to make sure that the links are the same length on both sides. So the first thing that I notice is graduation is something that you really have to deal with when you're trying to cut something really, really blunt and hard. We'll continue on cutting horizontally, cutting our baseline until we finish. All right, so we've gone through, we've cut our entire baseline, left side blunt, right side point cut. And I can already see a major difference in the sides and just the baseline being cut with a point cut versus it being cut very, very blunt. So the blunt side is definitely a lot more structured and a lot more solid. Whereas the point cut side, and remember I've only point cut maybe the last, you know, three quarter of an inch of the right side, but it already has a lot more softness and a lot more movement to it. 
So now let's move into some layering. I'm going to split the head right down the middle as close as I can to try to make this as even as I can. I'm going to pin the structured side, the blunt side out of the way and then I'm going to work on the point cut side. All right, so I'm going to take a, a center part. I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to determine what kind of length I want. And we're going to go through and point cut that all the way through. Holding 90 degrees from the head as we work that back. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notification bell to be notified of future Jatai videos. Point cutting that pretty aggressively until I go through and blend that in to the nape. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a parallel section to the previously cut section and I'm going to hold everything up straight back into the center of the head following my center guide and continuing to point cut that through. Everything being pulled to the center. Work that all the way through until I run out of hair. Now from here, I'll do exactly the same thing. My last section was there. I'm going to take the next section and pull this up. Now as I start to get to the flat part of the head, I should start running out of hair that will reach because this hair won't reach. So this is the last section that will reach straight up into the center. Point cut that through, pull that up and through. You see very little hair is beginning to reach. So most of the layering doing this method is going to be into the center of the head and gradually getting less as I get to my perimeter shape. Pull that up and through. Very little, if any, reaches. Just making sure everything's clean. The last section here and nothing really reaches. All good. Now I've layered the right side of the head. I'm going to go through and do the same thing, the same sectioning on the left side of the head, but instead of point cutting, I'm cutting it blunt. Now we have finished our layering and now let's go through, take a look at it and see how each side really compares with each other. Now if we go through and we look at the side that we point cut and as I brush it, you can certainly tell there's a lot more movement to it. There's a lot more softness to it. And as those layers kind of swish about, it's a lot more fluid and it blends in a lot easier. It doesn't have the same structure, but it has the same shape, if that makes sense. So because it has a softer shape, it's gonna flow a little bit better, it's gonna have a lot more movement to it, and it's not gonna be quite as solid of a shape. Now, if we look at the side that we've cut blunt, it's obviously a much more solid shape, and when I brush it, it doesn't have the same kind of fluidity to it. It wants to fall right back to the same structure that it was cut in. And you can really see in the back here, the variances of the layering. While the layering here, it, it's still smoother and the shape is still smooth. You can certainly see the heaviness in the layering 
throughout the back of it and throughout the sides of it because it was cut so blunt. But the layering on the other side, it's a much softer blend and it was cut exactly the same way. There was no variances in the haircut itself, just in the application of the actual cut itself, blunt versus point cutting. So if we look at this and we think, okay, when would I want to use a really structured blunt shape? Well, maybe when they have finer textures of hair and we're trying to build as much solidity and thickness as we can get, then I think a solid shape works really, really well. So when would I want to use point cutting technique? I would want to use the point cutting technique if someone had really, really thick hair. They wanted to style their hair in different ways all the time because then that opens up the possibility of being able to style it multitudes of ways. And also, I want to depuff it a little bit because when I texturize the ends by point cutting it, it makes the hair a little bit more pliable. It doesn't build up as much stiffness and structure and it flows a little bit better. Please check out the Jatai Academy. There's all kinds of great information on there and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.